Davy Wheel and Lag TV coverage of DragonCon 2008. Great. Probably something that I wouldn't have just come across myself. It's really weird. Starts off really, really weird. It's like interspersed in this really fun game. It's some sob story about some guy trying to win back his girlfriend or something. It's like the guy who was supposed to write the storyline for this. I like, took a break because his girlfriend dumped him and he's like crying and he's thinking, man, you can rewind time in this game. What if I could rewind time and get my girlfriend back? Once you get past that, this is a lot of fun. Time is the, the center feature of this. You can always rewind time with the X button, but there's other stuff. Every level has something new. Like in the second level, there are green areas that aren't affected by time. Anything can be green. The platform, yeah. uh, the creature, yeah, you. And after that, you've got stuff with shadows. Like, you'll do something, then you'll rewind time, and then your purple shadow will go forward and redo that same thing. The purple things are affected. There's all kinds of little, I mean, you'd call them gimmicks, but gimmicks has a negative tone. These are like just new twists on it. And the whole point is to go through and collect these puzzle pieces, and then you put together puzzles, and it's surprisingly fun. I mean, most people think this is such a nerd fest, but... Well, it is. It, it's well and truly a nerd fest, but... I guess. But there are a lot of hot nerd lot women of, here. There are a lot of definitions of nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Hey... Hey, can, can someone Wait. get that belly dancer out of our shop, please? What, what are you talking Back about? Back up. That, no, 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 right, right yeah. there. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, see you guys later. Yeah, um, have fun at we, PAX. We've got some stuff to do. Peace. We're talking about... Star Wars The Force Unleashed. The Force Unleashed. Not no, just the Force, Force Unleashed. The Force. It's like the club. It's The Force Unleashed. Anyway, you play as Super Emo Sith Starkiller. Uh, you got the haircut and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Ever play PsyOps? I hope so. It was awesome. It's the same sort of thing with throwing stuff around, picking it up. Beyond that, you've just got your standard lightsaber interaction. you got a force push. you got lightning. It's Obi-Wan, Jedi Knight. You get a double jump. You get a dash. Yeah. I, I'm not seeing what all the hype was about. It's not that great. It's just a game. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's more storyline, I guess, but... It's not paradigm shifting. Mm -mm. It's not even money shifting from my perspective. I may rent yeah. it. Maybe rent it. Just because we review games. You know, that's a demo, so go figure. Yeah. We've been apparently Dead Rising was a lot of fun, and we hated the demo, so who knows. Yeah, download it. Hey guys, it's time for us to go live again on our reporting in Dragon Con. My esteemed colleague is nowhere to be found, so in his absence, I'm going to talk about a game that I played that he never tried. Ninja Gaiden, Gaiden, Gaiden 2, however you're supposed to say it. I gave this game instant credit because the Ask a Ninja guy did a bunch of promos for it, and I'm kind of questioning his ninjiness because it's not nearly as good as he said. He really let me down. But I was never a follower of the Ninja Gaiden series, so... Maybe there was something that I'm missing because I don't have that background. I have, like, Ninja Gaiden 2 on the NES, and that reminds me that the numbering scheme is kind of weird because I have 2 already on the NES, but this is 2 on the Xbox, and I, I don't know what they're doing. I think they had a black and a silver and I had a Sigma, and they're going kind of Street Fighter on me. The game is very combo -rific. you have excellent weapons, really awesome instant death moves, lots of blood, lots of lopping off limbs, and these cybernetic weird things continue to attack you. I mean, if you like gore and arcades and things like that, I mean, you're really going to like the game. I was instantly hooked because I could lop off legs. I really didn't understand a lot about what was going on in the game because I didn't have the backstory. Bosses in the game are really irritating. I almost stopped playing the game entirely and just would never speak of it again after that stupid long silver demon thing that's in the sewers. As far as overall gameplay, you know, again, like always, gotta give it credit for what it is, gotta give it credit for staying, I guess, true to its original storyline and nature. I give it a 3 out of 5. I think that the graphics were kind of fun. The gameplay was fun. The camera drove me absolutely wild, which is usually the downfall in almost any game. I really honestly think that the official website for this game sums it up nicely. They have a big, bold ad that says only $29.95 now for the PS3, and that's kind of sad. 
Anyway, back to uh, the guys in Seattle. I hope you guys are having a lot of fun broadcasting at PAX, and I'm going to go find my colleague. Later. we got a few minutes here to talk about another game. Geometry Wars Evolved This is not a game, game, Robert. This is not a game. This is a lifestyle. Okay, I'll give you that. This is the ultimate. I, I, don't, have, I don't have a word. What's a word for this? Game does not suffice, and you know it. Do you remember Geometry Wars? Of course you remember Geometry Wars. Ask yourself, hmm, I love Geometry Wars, but what would make Geometry Wars better? And ooh, 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 wait, ooh, Robert? Four-player co-op multiplayer? That's right. Four-player co-op multiplayer would make Geometry Wars perfect. But what does Geometry Wars Evolve 2 have? Four-player co-op multiplayer. Yeah, for the people that are like that, there's also versus two really cool possible modes to the actual co-op. You can each have your own little ship. Or you can you could split it up where one person pilots and the other person shoots. On top of that, there's a bunch of different play modes for both single and cooperative. There's one, what's it called, King? Yeah. Where there are circles of safety where they can't get to you, but those are the only places that you can shoot. Mm -hmm. There's sequence where you, there's all these patterns you got to do and there's waves. If you haven't already downloaded this game, I don't Understand know who you, you are. Yeah. Stop watching. Oh, I know who you are. You're one of those guys that has a core. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, we're going to go hang out with cool people at Dragon Con. So, yeah. bye, core users. Peace out. We have an urgent public service announcement on behalf of the Robert Bennett Foundation. Yes, if you see this woman again at PAX, tell her I want her number. Please, do not let him look this sad any longer. Microsoft continuing their month of Xbox Live Arcade games brought us yet another sequel of an ancient, ancient game. Ancient. Ancient. Galaga Legions. It's not multiplayer like Geometry Wars that was so similar to it in general nature and graphics and gameplay, but it was an incredible leap from the old to the new. Very few people on the planet actually enjoyed Galaga. Robert's girlfriend being one of them enjoyed it. Everyone else just played it at the time because there was nothing else to play. Galaga Legion is super awesome. That's a trademark. Super awesome. You start off with like three ships, sort of, as a unit, and then as things are coming from the sides or the bottom or whatever, you can use the right stick to position those other ships to just sit still and fire and kind of cover for you while you move, still move independently. Surprisingly intuitive system and uh, very enjoyable. Adds a lot to the gameplay. Yeah, it's action plus strategy now, so that's really cool. I don't care that it's not multiplayer. I love it. I'm going to yeah. play it forever. Ever. And ever. And ever.